this module, we will look at the flight warning system. First, we will examine the general architecture and logic of the system. After that, we go over the different levels of alerting. Next, we will cover the alert inhibitions. Finally, we will review the very full alerts. The Flight Warning System, or FWS, is designed to monitor all systems of the ATR and provide warnings for malfunctions, abnormal situations, and flight envelope deviations. The FWS uses both visual and oral alerts to warn the flight crew of problems. Alert messages are displayed in the alerting window in the lower left corner of the engine and warning display, or EWD. If there is a procedure associated with the alert, it is displayed in the procedure window, to the right of the alerting window. Annunciator lights on the ATR follow a lights out design principle. This means that all control panels will be dark if the systems are functioning normally, except for indications of normal operation or transient configuration, or a fault indication. Visual alerts are color-coded. Red represents a warning about a configuration that requires immediate action. Ember represents a caution about a configuration that does not require immediate action. Green represents normal operation. Cyan represents normal transient configuration. And, white represents a system that is selected off. The FWS issues various oral alerts that fall into two categories, non-specific and specific. Non-specific oral alerts are accompanied with alert messages and the illumination of the master caution or master warning lights, whereas specific oral alerts are not. This screen is interactive. Click on the icons to learn what the different oral alerts sound like. The FWS consists of the following components. Two modules, one is located in MFC-1B, and the other is in MFC-2B. Two core processing modules, or CPMs, one is located in each core avionic cabinet, or CAC. Six input-output modules, or IOMs, three are located in each CAC. Two switch modules, or SWMs, one is located in each CAC. Two EFIS control panels, or EFCPs. Two master warning lights and two master caution lights. And an emergency audio cancel switch, and a takeoff configuration test push button. The FWS is managed by two flight warning applications, or FWA. FWA1 is located in CAC1. FWA2 is located in CAC2. When a problem occurs, the detection sequence follows three distinct phases. Detection. Identification. And isolation. Phase 1 detection consists of an oral alert sounding, and either both master caution or master warning lights flashing. Phase 2 identification consists of an alert message in the alerting window on the EWD. The message provides a general idea of the problem. It is color-coded according to the severity of the problem. Phase 3 isolation consists of local alerts, visual indications on the control and indicating panels of the affected system. An example of this would be an illuminated amber caption in a push button. Local alerts are activated by the associated system, and they are independent from the flight warning system. 
This alert gives the crew a specific idea about what is wrong. System display pages on the multifunction display, or MFD, display a simplified diagram of various systems. When an alert has been triggered, the associated system display page will highlight the problem by means of a colored icon. There are four levels of alerts, which are based on importance and urgency of crew action. Level 3 alerts are warnings. These are triggered by series system failures, or when the aircraft is in an unsafe configuration or is exceeding a limit. Level 3 alerts consist of a continuous repetitive chime, or CRC, both master warning lights flashing, and a red warning message on the EWD. Some warnings may include a specific oral warning, such as the stall warning. Level 2 alerts are cautions. These are triggered by system failures that do not have an immediate impact on the safety of flight. Level 2 alerts consist of a single chime, both master caution lights flashing, and an amber caution message on the EWD. Level 1 alerts are advisories. These are triggered by situations that require crew monitoring. In general, Advisories occur when there is a loss of system redundancy. Level 1 alerts consist of an ember caution message on the EWD. There are no oral alerts associated with advisories. Level 0 alerts are information. An example of a level 0 alert is DME hold. Level 0 alerts are displayed in green, cyan, or white. These alerts are not handled by the FWS so there are no associated alert messages on the EWD. If there are multiple messages, they are displayed in order of importance. Therefore, warning messages are always displayed above caution messages. Caution messages are displayed above advisory messages. Procedures associated with alert messages have the same priority as the associated alert message. If there is a procedure associated with an alert message, it is displayed in the procedure window to the right of the alerting window. The title of the procedure is colored the same as the associated alert message. You can move up and down the steps of a procedure by using the two up and down buttons on the EFIS control panel. This will place a box around the selected step. A boxed item, which can be a step, procedure or option, can be activated by pressing the V-Push button. The alert message area of the EWD has a limited number of lines available to display alert messages. The Recall button, on the EFIS control panel, is used to scroll down the list of messages. Messages are removed when the problem that triggered the alert in the first place no longer exists. In the event a problem persists, some messages can be cleared after the applicable checklist was run. These usually involve level 2 or 1 alerts. These messages can be removed from the EWD by pressing the clear button on the EFIS control panel. This will also remove the checklist if one was displayed. During the descent, you will recall these messages by pressing the recall button. This is done to remind the crew of any conditions that still exist. Click on the clear button to clear messages. The master warning and master caution lights are two flashing push buttons located directly in front of each crew member. They're designed as attention grabbers. When a button is pressed by either pilot, both the flashing and oral alerting will stop. Click the left master caution light to extinguish both lights. Some alerts are automatically inhibited during the takeoff phase. Engine oil and smoke warnings are the only level 3 warnings that are inhibited during takeoff. Most level 2 cautions are inhibited during the takeoff phase.
the takeoff inhibitions are cancelled automatically when the landing gear unlocks for retraction, or manually when the recall button is pressed. Nuisance or false alerts can be silenced with the emergency audio cancel toggle switch, located on the right side of the center pedestal. This would generally apply to level 3 warnings since those are accompanied by a continuous repetitive chime. Movement of this switch will silence whatever alarm is currently sounding. Any other alarms will still be heard. When an affected system alert has been cancelled with the emergency audio cancel switch, the affected system will not provide another warning for that condition unless the MFC has been reset by cycling aircraft power. MFC 1B2B is reset. The recall push button is pressed. Or, the takeoff configuration test push button is pressed. The emergency audio cancel switch will not silence audio alerts for the following conditions. Landing gear. A VMO, VFE, or VLE overspeed. Stall warning. Pitch trim ruler. Or, autopilot disconnect. Next to the emergency audio cancel switch, is the takeoff configuration test push button. This button is pressed before every takeoff to check for correct aircraft configuration. The test works by simulating the power levers being placed in the takeoff position. The system checks that. The flaps are in the takeoff position. Pitch trim is in the green range. The aileron lock is disengaged. The power management rudder knob is in the takeoff position. And, the travel limiting unit is in the low speed configuration. There will be no alerts if the configuration is correct, and a takeoff configuration test OK message is displayed on the EWD. If the configuration is incorrect, the master warning lights will flash, the continuous repetitive chime will sound and a red configuration message will be displayed on the EWD. The affected system will be displayed as well. There are several indications that indicate that the configuration is incorrect. A, a configuration flight control message indicates that the TLU is not in low speed. There is a disagreement of the aileron lock. The flaps are not in takeoff configuration. Or, the pitch trim is out of the green range. The parking brake is not monitored by the takeoff configuration test. There is built in redundancy to handle a failure of the flight warning system itself. The system architecture allows for local alerting in the event both MFC 1B and 2B fail. This is indicated by an amber MFC message on the EWD. The associated fault lights illuminate steady on the MFC panel, and both master caution lights illuminate without flashing. In this situation, all level 2 alerts will not be processed, so the crew would have to monitor the control panels on the overhead panel. In addition to the level 2 alerts, the following level 3 alerts will not be processed. Configuration, engine oil, and propeller brake. All other level 3 alerts will be displayed on the EWD. In other words, there will be no flashing master warning lights or continuous repetitive chime. The FWS not available message is displayed in amber in the EWD procedure window when there is a fault that renders the flight warning system inoperative. This is accompanied by a procedure to follow.
Now we will take a look at the specific conditions that trigger oral alerts. Altitude alerts are provided whenever the aircraft altitude is within 1,000 feet of the pre-selected altitude. It also signals entering the 250-foot capture zone. This alert is a bong or C-court sound. The overspeed alert or clacker is heard anytime there is an overspeed condition for VMO, VLE, or VFEVFO. The pitch trim ruler sounds anytime the pitch trim is in motion for more than one second. Stall warnings are detected by the angle of attack, or AOA probes. When a stall is sensed, an oral alert sounds, and the MFC will activate the stick shaker. When the angle of attack becomes excessive, the MFC will activate the stick pusher. The stick pusher is operational as long as any two MFC modules are operating. The triggering threshold for stall warning varies with power setting, flap configuration, and if an anti-icing horns push button is pressed in. Normal stall warning occurs at 10.9 degrees AOA with flaps at 15 degrees in non-icing conditions. In this case, the icing AOA light would be extinguished. In icing conditions, when a horn's push button is pressed in and the icing AOA push button is illuminated, the stall warning threshold reduces. Instead of activating at 10.9 degrees AOA with flaps at 15 degrees, the stall warning activates at 8.4 degrees AOA. The stall alarm, stick shaker, and stick pusher are inhibited when the aircraft is on the ground. Stick pusher triggering varies between 10.6 and 14.3 degrees AOA depending on the same factors. These factors are power setting, flap configuration, and anti-icing configuration. The stick pusher is inhibited during the first 10 seconds after takeoff, as well as within 500 feet of the ground during descent, provided the radio altimeter is working. There is a priority order for the audio alerts. The priority system is designed to sound the most important oral alert, in the event there are several warnings occurring at the same time. You will notice that the stall warning has the highest priority.